Coming up at number 10 now, we have the robot cannon. In 2008, a tragedy in South Africa occurred when a robotic cannon malfunctioned, killing nine soldiers and injuring a further 15. It was the first day in which the soldiers had used live ammunition on this anti aircraft gun. As the guns fired, one of them had a stoppage. Now, this happens sometimes, and technicians came out to quickly fix the gun. This time, though, after the gun was fixed and began firing again, it swung wildly to the left. One barrel fired a burst of 15 to 20 shots in just one eighth of a second. That's all it took to kill the nine soldiers and injure 15 others who were operating the other guns to the left of the malfunctioning one. Coming in at number 9 is No Record. Now this creepy ass story took place back in 2006 and it honestly makes me worried for our future but then again climate change is just going to kill us all anyway so let's just cross the robot bridge when we get there. Alright great. Now either way a robotic workstation at Alliance Tech Systems totally lost its and went crazy on an employee. The robot was called the Gator, and as the man was walking near it, it pinned him against his own frame and crushed him. When other employees found the body, he was found in a chokehold held against the Gator, with his arms still reaching for the reset button. But the even scarier part is what happened after that. The company tested the robot, and it showed there were no malfunctions in any of its movements, and there was also no memory of the event or murder in its drive. So did the Gator literally just delete evidence? of a murder it committed? I'm not really sure. And if it wasn't a malfunction, did it intend to commit murder? Let's talk about that. Moving on to number 8 now, we have Volkswagen. In 2015, a robot killed a contract worker at a Volkswagen production plant in Germany. A 22 year old male was part of a team that was setting up the robot when it grabbed him and crushed him to death against a metal plate. Now, the initial report from the company blamed human error. A spokesperson said that the robot normally operated within a confined area at the plant where its job was to grab car parts and manipulate them. This tragedy saw the young man suffering severe injuries to his chest. He was immediately rushed to hospital, but ultimately died from his wounds. Now, At the time, this was thought to be the first death in Europe caused by a robot machine, even though its owners did say it was totally human error. Next up at number 7 now, we have electrocution. In 2015, it was reported that a man had been killed by a robot at a car parts factory in India. The 24 year old worker was adjusting a metal sheet when the robot holding the sheet stabbed him in one of his arms. One of his colleagues explained to the local newspaper that the sheet had got dislodged and that the man had tried to reach from behind the machine to adjust it. That's when the welding sticks punched forward right into the man's abdomen. At this point in the story, some people claim that the man was electrocuted. The company has kept details of this whole story tightly under wraps and so there has been no real way to confirm the ultimate cause of death. In the aftermath, police reviewed CCTV footage of the factory and interviewed every one of his co-workers to ensure that nothing illegal was taking place. Moving on to number 6 now, we have the bear spray. In December 2018, it was reported that 24 Amazon employees were hospitalized when a robot malfunctioned, spraying their workplace with bear repellent that put one in a critical condition. It's said that the robot accidentally tore open a 9 ounce can of bear repellent at an Amazon warehouse in New Jersey. This exposed 55 employees to concentrated capsaicin, the active ingredient in pepper spray. 30 employees were treated on the scene, 24 were taken to hospital as a precaution, and one was reported to be in a critical condition. Fortunately, nobody was seriously injured. Moving on to number 5 now, we have the factory. In December 2018, a shocking story came out of China where a factory worker was skewered with 10 steel spikes after a robot malfunctioned and impaled him. Seriously, look away if you're squeamish, these pictures are horrible. Incredibly, the 49 year old man managed to survive the initial accident. Surgeons worked quickly to remove the steel spikes and found that one of them was just 0.04 inches from a major artery. Each of these steel bars measured 30 centimeters in length and 1.4 centimeters in diameter. The accident occurred when the robotic arm collapsed on the man, sending its spikes piercing right through him. Surgeons actually struggled to figure out how to examine his insides due to the fact that they couldn't x-ray him because of the steel spikes. An emergency surgery saved his life the very next day. I don't know what happened to the robot though. Moving on to number 4 now, we have McDonald's. Now This story comes from 2009, where an employee for a company that 
that supplies McDonald's was killed by a malfunctioning robot. Anna Maria Vital of La Puente was pronounced dead after sustaining crushing injuries. They were caused by boxing machinery after Anna tried to remove a box that had been lodged in the machine. The scene was quickly contained and employees were turned away at the entrance. One employee who witnessed the event said that when the box moving robot grabbed Anna, mechanics tried to remove her from the machinery it was just too late. A spokesperson for the company said, We are deeply saddened by this tragic accident that occurred at our manufacturing plant in the city of industry. On behalf of our entire organization, we want to express our deepest sympathies to the families and friends of the individual involved in this unfortunate accident. Next up at number three now, we have Uber. In March 2018, Uber made the news for all the wrong reasons when one of their self-driving cars killed a woman on the street in Arizona. The local police said the self-driving car was in autonomous mode at the time of the crash, but there was actually a human in the driver's seat. The victim was walking outside of the crosswalk area and later died in hospital. As a result, the company said it was pausing its self-driving car operations across a number of US cities. Police investigation revealed that yes, the woman was actually walking outside of the crosswalk area with a bicycle when she was hit. Many people have said this isn't a good enough excuse for autonomous vehicles though and that they need to be worked on a lot more if they can't prepare for humans breaking the rules of the road, even just a tiny bit like that. Moving on to number two now, we have Kenji Arada. That's the name of the man that was checking on a malfunctioning robot arm at the Kawasaki vehicle plant in Akashi, Japan in 1981. The machine had been turned off, but as Kenji leapt over a chain fence to inspect the robot, he accidentally hit the switch that reactivated it. As a result, he was almost instantly pinned against the machine that's used for processing automobile gears and was crushed to death before his co-workers could do anything. At first, there was a lot of criticism towards the company about their safety protocols. Others actually defended them and pointed out that a robot was designed so that if the gate on the chain fence was opened, it would always lose power. If Kenji had opened the gate rather than jump right over the fence, the arm could not have possibly been activated even if he had not the switch. And finally, number one now, we have Wanda Halbrook. In 2015, tragedy struck at Ventura Iona, a company which specializes in the welding and stamping of truck bumpers. 57-year-old Wanda Holbrook was the victim of a robot malfunctioning. It hit and crushed her head, killing her almost instantly. She left behind a husband, three children, and grandchildren. I think the most upsetting thing for her family, though, was the lack of answers. Her husband ended up suing five robotics companies, which he believed all played a role in his wife's death due to the negligence by those who designed, built, tested, and monitored the robots. He said he wanted to make sure nothing like this ever happened happens to another family. Starting up at number 10 now, we have Ford. On the 25th of January 1979, Robert Williams became the first person to be killed by a robot. He was working at the Ford Motor Company casting plant in Michigan when he was struck in the head and killed by the arm of a one-ton production line robot. The robot was part of a parts retrieval system that moved material from one part of the factory to another. Now on that day, the robot began running slowly. Robert climbed into the storage rack to retrieve the the parts manually and that's when he was struck in the head. Since then, factory robots and the workers that monitor them have become a lot safer. Many new protocols have helped make the whole environment better. Moving on to number 9 now, we have the robot surgeon. In 2015, news broke of a robot surgeon that killed 144 patients and injured a further 1,391. Basically, if this robot was a person, it would be one of the worst killers of all time. Technically speaking though, if I'm being honest, this wasn't all due to one single robot. Those deaths and injuries were from many different robots used during surgeries in the US. If you want to talk about specific robots though, there was an example in this study of a mechanical surgeon that killed two people and injured 52 others when it kept powering down mid-operation or making an incorrect movement. Another common case that caused one death and 119 injuries were pieces of the robot falling off into the patient, requiring a human surgical team to intervene and retrieve the broken hardware. Now the good news is that with every mistake, technicians and engineers are learning invaluable lessons about how to make these robot surgeons as safe as they can possibly be in the future. Next up at number 8 now we have electrocution. In August 2015, 24-year-old Ramji Lal was killed by a robot in a factory in India. It was a car parts factory and Ramji had been working there for about 18 months when it happened. He was working with a robot that is programmed to weld metal sheets together. One of them got dislodged so Ramji 
reach behind the machine to adjust it. At that point, the machine sparked back to life and pierced Ramji's abdomen. It was reported that at that point, Ramji was electrocuted and died almost instantly. The company management and the contractor were charged with causing death due to negligence. Next up at number seven now, we have Wanda Holbrook. In 2015, Wanda Holbrook, a technician at an auto parts factory in Michigan, was killed by a malfunctioning robot. The 57 year old was working on the robot when his arm swung out and crushed her head, killing her. It was a devastating shock to her husband, her three children and grandchildren, and all of her co-workers at the factory. In 2017, her husband Bill Holbrook sued five robotics companies who were involved in the robot's design and manufacture. Now he said they all played a role in his wife's death and that the accident was due to their negligence. Moving on to number six now, we have the Robocop. This one was no accident. In 2016, Dallas police were locked in a tent standoff with Mika Johnson. The former soldier had shot and killed five police officers and wounded nine more as well as two civilians. He was holed up in a local college during which the police gave him an ultimatum. Come outside and surrender or remain inside and risk lethal force. He didn't come outside and so police sent in a robot with a brick of C4 attached to it. It was detonated after it entered the building. The explosion killed Johnson and damaged the robot. A robot bombing was a first for a police department in the US. Next up number five now we have Kenji Urada. He was a Japanese engineer who was working at an industrial factory while trying to repair one of the robots there. In July 1981 a glitch with the robot made it pin him against another machine and crush him to death. So how exactly did this happen? Well the robot was in fault repairs and was in a separate area behind a door that shut down the robot when anyone walked through it. The problem was Urada didn't use the door. He jumped right over the fence. When he brushed against the robot he accidentally activated it. This was the first Japanese person to be killed by a robot in this way. Moving on to number four now we have the robot cannon. In 2007 the South African army began investigating how a software glitch led to an anti-aircraft cannon opening fire on the soldiers who were operating it. Although they are guns many people see these things as more like lethal robots. They come with passive and active radar, laser targeting and can even reload by themselves. It doesn't even need humans to function. Perhaps that's why it made it so lethal when it malfunctioned on that day. The gun sprayed hundreds of high explosive cannon shells around the area and only stopped when it was empty by which point nine soldiers were dead and 11 injured. Moving on to number three now we have the robot surgeons. A 2013 report in the US found that over the previous five years robot assisted surgery had been linked to the deaths of 144 people in the country. Robotic surgery has been praised as one of the great medical advances of the century but sometimes there have been fatal errors. The robots allow surgeons to enter much smaller parts of the human body. Sometimes the surgeons don't even need to be in the same room, building or even country. Of the deaths noted in the report, the causes range from system errors causing delays to bits of machinery falling into the patient's open wounds. Alright next up at number two now we have Volkswagen. In 2015, German car manufacturer Volkswagen announced that a robot had killed a contractor at one of their production plants. The unnamed 22 year old was part of a team setting up the robot when it grabbed him and crushed him against a metal plate. A spokesperson for the company said that an early investigation seemed to point the blame at human error rather than a problem with the robot. He said it normally operates within a confined area at the plant, grabbing auto parts and manufacturing them. Prosecutors were considering whether to bring charges and if so, against whom. And finally number one now we have McDonald's. In 2009, a malfunctioning robot killed Maria Vital when she was working at a factory that supplies McDonald's. The robot was a palletizer. Its only job is to stack boxes on a pallet. Now at some point it broke down. Maria entered the cage to remove the box and then reset the robot. However, the robot was still active and grabbed Maria as if she was one of the boxes that needed moving. It crushed her torso. Her co-workers tried desperately to free her from its grip, but it only stopped once the whole machine had its power shut down. Starting us off at number 10 is the 10 foot spike. Back in December of 2018, 49 year old Mr. Zhao was working the night shift at a porcelain factory located in the Hunan province of China. Out of nowhere, a robotic arm fell from machinery above Mr. Zhao and he was impaled with 10 foot long, half inch thick metal skewers. The pictures are honestly horrific. They're just sticking out of his back and his arm. Six impaled his shoulder and chest, while the other four were elsewhere on his body. But it was such a close call that during surgery, the doctor found one rod missing his artery by a mere 0.1 millimeters. Do you know how 
near of a miss that is. They spent all night operating on him and taking them out, but he had to go through a lot of treatment and physiotherapy afterwards in order to regain the use of his right arm. Next up on number 9 now we have the Tesla. As a fully automated self driving car, some people see the Tesla Model S as more artificial intelligence than just plain old car. On May 7th 2016, the tech world was stunned when Joshua Brown became the first person to be killed in a self driving car accident. He was driving his Model S when it collided with a truck while engaged in autopilot mode. The car requires the driver to keep their hands on the wheel even in autopilot. An investigation found that during the 37 minute drive, Brown had his hands on the wheel for just 25 seconds. Some people said this was proof of the dangers of self driving cars, but a Tesla spokesperson said the autopilot does not allow the driver to abdicate responsibility. At number 8 we have Samsung. Now most of us remember the incident surrounding the Samsung Galaxy Note 7 released back in 2016. Mere weeks before the phones US release, a bunch of customers in South Korea started complaining about how their smartphones were legitimately combusting and exploding. Like I remember when I was traveling during that time and after, there were special signs put up that you could not travel with the Note 7 on board in case it explodes mid flight. And mind you, you guys already know I'm an Android girl through and through, but imagine how bad that looks on the company. Samsung lost $26 billion in value on the stock market and had to recall all the units and replace them. And then the replacements had the same issue, so I mean, kind of came full circle, didn't it? And yes, a phone is a robot. Doodle -doo. Filling our number 7 slot is the GPS. Now this one is so scary because it's so relatable. I feel like half the world uses the GPS on their phone or in their car every single day. Anyway, back in April of 2015, if the car Hassan was fixated on the GPS in his car while trying to get somewhere in Indiana. The GPS took them to a derelict semi demolished bridge that was legit not even joint in the middle, like it was like this. Now there were warning signs that the bridge was closed because it had been since 2009 but he had been so focused on the screen he didn't even realize. If the car and his wife Zora plunge into the water 40 feet below, his wife died, but if the car survived. Now at number 6 is the skull crusher. So back in March of 2017, 57 year old Wanda Holbrook showed up to her shift at the Venture Iona Mains plant in Michigan. She worked there as a maintenance specialist and so you'd think this is the last person a robot accident would happen to, but you'd be wrong. Now the plant made car parts and was divided into sections with designated robots that were weren't allowed to cross into alternate sections. However, clearly not because one robot did just that and crossed into the section Wanda was in and picked up a trailer part, dropped it on her skull, crushing and killing her instantly. The robot was actually trying to load a trailer part onto a fixture that already had another part on it, but that shouldn't have even been possible, but somehow it wasn't. The robot was actually trying to load a trailer part onto a fixture that already had another part on it, which should have been impossible, but somehow it wasn't, and it happened, and Wanda was killed. See, there is robot error, it's not just human error. Coming in at number 5 is the backhand. In December of 2012, a 38 year old employee working at Soda CS Selling Heights was working inside a robot work cell with the gates closed. Now, while he was working away, he got hit in the back of the head by a transfer robot, and upon hearing that, you'd think he was probably knocked out or something, but no, no, that one hit crushed his neck and chest and killed him. That really goes to show how puny and fragile humans really are. Am I right? It's one of those humbling, we ain't sh moments. Now, if you're working in an industry like like that, please remember safety first over everything. Cockiness will get you killed, folks. Remember that. At number four is the bear repellent. So back in December of 2018, at a New Jersey Amazon warehouse, 24 employees were rushed to the hospital when a robot accidentally punctured some bear repellent. And I mean, any repellent is very uncomfortable. This thing is meant to repel a bear from killing you. It's gonna be strong. It's made with chili pepper extract and was inhaled by 50 something employees. The fumes caused a lot of breathing problems, throat and eye irritation, and stinging and a lot more. What made it worse was that this wasn't even the first bear repellent related incident at an Amazon warehouse. In 2015, a robot ran over a can of bear repellent and the same thing happened. That's like a 1 in 100 chance of that happening. How did it happen twice at the same company? Why are you carrying bear repellent? Oh, you're probably selling it. Filling at number 3 slot is the wedding crasher. This one really broke my heart. So back in June of 2016, 20 year old Regina Elsie was at her day job at Asian USA, a plant that made parts for Kia and Hyundai cars. That day Regina and a few co-workers were trying to fix a malfunctioning robot which they actually shouldn't have done. Employees were never meant to attempt to fix robots themselves but the multiple calls to maintenance had fallen on deaf ears. Mid attempt the robot randomly started up again and pushed Regina against another machine 
started critically injuring her. She was taken to a medical center before being flown out to a hospital, but she sadly died of her injuries the next day. And this was sadly only two weeks before her wedding. She was 20, you guys. That's two years younger than me. And I'm already a small bean. Now, and number two is the electrocution. This one seems so painful, I can't even. Just like, I'm cringing thinking about it. Anyway, back in September of 2017, 37-year-old Yang Ming got electrocuted by this machine part on his building site, and the shock was so severe it made him fly backwards and skewer himself onto a protruding metal rod. The rod went through his anus and went all the way through him, stopping right under his right shoulder. In some kind of miraculous luck, the poor missed all his vital organs, but still tore parts of his intestines, liver, bladder, and lungs. He was actually conscious when he arrived at the hospital with minimal bleeding. Like, can you imagine having that through your whole body and be conscious? Like, I can't. He underwent seven hours of surgery, but the four foot metal bar was removed from his body and all was well. And finally, at number one are robot surgeons. And you'd assume they were really precise because I've seen those videos on Twitter of a robot surgeon giving stitches to like a grape and like the thinnest layer of grape gets peeled back. And I was like, damn. But reality is never as blessed as Twitter, is it? No, no, it's not. Now, let me hit you with some stats real quick. Between 2000 and 2013, 144 people died during robot-assisted surgeries. Nearly 1,400 were injured, and there were 8,000 plus incidents of robot malfunctions. And I thought we use robots to literally eliminate the risk of human error. Clearly, they're acting up as well, so who do we even really trust? Metal with no empathy, or humans with empathy? Two deaths and 52 injuries occurred because machine surgeons just up and decided to spontaneously turn off mid-operation for just shits and giggles, I guess. Nearly 200 people were injured due to electrical sparks burning them, and 119 people died because bits of the robot just fell into the patient during surgery. The human surgeon was probably like, F my life, to be honest. You were meant to make this easy, not bring me down, you imbecile. Mm -hmm.